Welcome to Triple N Media. I am Dr. Nick Nickham, a cardiologist from Houston, Texas. The cardiology seminars are brought to you by Triple N Media. On our YouTube channel, we have more than 200 lectures on cardiology topics. We kindly request you to watch them and also please do subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can notify you of uh, future additions to our cardiology library. The information provided here is for education and entertainment purposes only and is not a professional advice. If you want me to research on a particular topic and create a video, please let me know. I'll be happy to do that. I have created a cardiology rotations manual for nurses, residents and fellows. If you would like to get a copy of this one, I will tell you how you can get it at the end of this presentation. The feature presentation is ACLS bradycardia algorithm. As a cardiologist, we face bradycardia very frequently. As a cardiologist, we face bradycardia very frequently in our practices. The cardiology textbook describes bradycardia as heart rate less than 60 beats per minute. However, the ACLS criteria defines it as a heart rate less than 50 beats per minute. We see bradycardia very often. Many times it is related to the drugs that are used in these cardiac patients like beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, digoxin. And some of these patients may have sick sinus syndrome where they have tachybrady syndrome. Some of these patients may have advanced uh, disease involving the conduction system leading to high grade AV block or complete heart block or if they already have a pacemaker it could be the end of the battery life which can result in pacemaker failure causing bradycardia. Myocardial ischemia is frequently a cause for severe bradycardia uh, particularly seen in patients with inferior myocardial infarction due to ischemia involving the AV node. It is also seen in patients with hypoxia, electrolyte imbalance, notably hyperkalemia. When we are talking about bradycardia, we are talking about symptomatic bradycardia. I see many patients in my practice who have heart rates like 50s, 45s, 40, or some of them even 35 without having any appreciable symptoms. But when these patients have a heart rate less than 50, which is associated with significant symptoms, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, then we are gonna be concerned about uh, the bradycardia. When we are assessing a patient with bradycardia, we wanna make sure we establish the heart rate and rhythm. We want to maintain adequate uh, airway, oxygen level, have an IV access, get a 12 lead electrocardiogram, look for any evidence of ischemia or infarction, and consider the possibility of hypoxia or sometimes it may be related to toxicity of drugs. Once we stabilize the patient uh, medically, then we're going to look for symptoms of severe bradycardia like hypotension, altered mental status, signs of shock, ischemia or chest pain, ongoing myocardial infarction or acute heart failure. If the patient has none of these symptoms, you just monitor these patients and see what may be causing this. If it's due to drugs, we can reduce the dosage of drugs. Many times these patients do need those drugs like beta blockers and calcium channel blockers to keep their heart rate under control in the presence of atrial fibrillation. In those situations, it's going to be extremely challenging to reduce the medications. That's why we have to balance the advantages versus the risks. And if they definitely need beta blockers or calcium channel blockers, and if their heart rate keeps dropping, then their option may be a pacemaker down the line. Once we have established a symptomatic bradycardia, we have several different options. We have IV medications we can give to these patients. We can put a temporary transcutaneous pacemaker or we can insert a permanent pacemaker if indicated. We start off with medications. The most commonly used medications are atropine, dopamine and epinephrine. Let us look at these drugs uh, in a minute and if these drugs don't work, we can use a transcutaneous pacemaker while we are getting the patient ready for a permanent solution such as a permanent pacemaker. 
Here are the drugs that are commonly used for treating bradycardia. Atropine, you give one milligram bolus. It can be repeated every three to five minutes to a maximum dose of three milligrams. But this is a temporary stopgap measure. If the bradycardia is symptomatic and if the bradycardia is organic or drug related, the heart rate may come up short for a short duration of time, but then it may slow down once the atropine effect wears off. The second drug we can use is dopamine with a dose ranging from 5 to 20 micrograms per kg per minute. And we need to taper this off slowly so we don't cause bradycardia. Epinephrine is another drug which can be used 2 to 10 micrograms per minute IV infusion but we need to be concerned about using epinephrine in patients with ongoing myocardial ischemia or infarction. There's one more drug which is not routinely mentioned in the ACLS manuals that is the isoproterenol or isoprel. It is an alpha stimulant which increases the heart rate. The dose is 0.5 to 5 micrograms per minute. This can be used as a temporary stopgap measure until the patient gets to the cardiac catheterization lab where the patient can get a permanent pacemaker. If all these things don't work, we can use a transcutaneous uh, pacemaker. However, it is very uncomfortable and the patient can feel the shocks every time the patient is being paced. From time to time, the heart may not capture these electrical impulses. The real solution would be to put a permanent pacemaker so that we address the underlying problem. As I mentioned to you, when cardiac patients are taking beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and they need those medications because they have sick sinus syndrome or heart failure, and you can't stop them, the best option in these patients may be putting a pacemaker and maximize the use of calcium channel blockers or beta blockers. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a quick review of ACLS bradycardia algorithm. If you would like to get a copy of my cardiology rotations manual, you can send me an email at drnicknickham at gmail.com. And on our YouTube channel, we have more than 200 lectures on cardiology topics. You're welcome to read them. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. These cardiology seminars are brought to you by Triple N Media and I am Dr. Nick Nickham from Houston, Texas. Thank you so much for watching this presentation.